everyone, welcome. Just give me one quick second here. Oh. Facebook's apparently going to be fast today. Yay! So welcome. Um, today, I was trying to decide... Oh, hi Amanda, welcome. I was trying to decide what to do today. And um, to be perfectly honest, I wasn't 100% sure. So I decided to grab a stamp set that hasn't seen some love for a bit. And this Music from the Heart was one that I absolutely loved in the catalog. And yet... I've used once. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? That makes it the perfect one to grab today because it retires next week, I believe. I don't think it carried over. I have not sorted through my stamp sets yet. I'm not that organized. So I'm going to get started. I actually I was like, oh, I need to, I couldn't find the one. I had based a card using the Timeless Tropical on this card from Tanya, and I was going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a front center fold flap, but I still want to be using the daubers to do the inking. Um, so, <laughs> so you know where I'm kind of coming from today. It may change as we go along. It's like the Lisa's prerogative class. <laughs> Whatever floats my boat today. So I'm going to cut a piece of thick white cardstock. I always use thick white for my card bases because it is so much stronger. I'm going to cut it at five and a half and at four and a quarter. And yes, I am cutting it because this is going to be a centerfold card. So I have my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. Oh, hi, Vicki. Welcome. Next up, I'm going to grab a piece of basic black. That particular one is too small, but um, I won't make you guys wait around too long. I'm going to cut it to four by five and a quarter. And I thought this card, we might mix some new with some old. So there's my four by five and a quarter and then I'm gonna go down again because I want the one thing I absolutely loved about Tanya's card was how she had that dual layer on there and just had the thin border exposed so I'm gonna grab more paper um, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the nice weather it's been a beautiful day out today um, sorry just Okay, that's currently at five, and I want five and one eighth, of course, so I'm just going to cut it down five, and I want three and seven eighths. And that's just to cut down to that thin edge all the way around, so you can kind of see where I'm going. So next up, I'm going to set my trimmer aside and my cardstock and just about everything else. <laughs> I'm going to grab my die cutting machine. I can't wait for our new die cutting machines to come out. I'm so excited. My current ones are getting a little loosey goosey on me. So I'm going to use my thick platform and I'm going to use this brand new Tasteful textile embossing folder. So this is out of the new catalog. It's not available to customers yet. Um, I don't know if you can see. It's kind of like a, a text. Well, it's literally a textile. So a material type texture to it. But the other thing to remember too is I did this upside down. There is a thin black line on one side of the embossing folders now. And the benefit of that is making sure that your paper is square, which is awesome. So I moved my camera a little bit closer to my work surface, which is great because you can see more, but then at the same time you can't see as much, so I apologize. Um, you can see more clearly, that's all. But you can see how cool that texture is. So next up, we'll set that aside. 
way over on the side because I don't need it again. Um, I am going to grab this back and we are going to cut the piece of thick white at three inches. I always mm -hmm. like the three inch. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. So this was a piece, this was actually my scrap. So it was at five and a half by eight and a half and we're scoring it at four and a quarter. And that's going to create our center flap. So it will end up, you can kind of see where I'm going. Because I haven't done this before, this particular card, I have done this layout. Um, I'm kind of wondering, I think I'm going to do the black at least again, and then a white square on top of that. So that was three inch. So I am going to go down to two and three quarter by four and, well, it should be four inch. And then I'm going to cut a piece of Whisper White. I was at two and three quarter. I need to be t bigger than that. <laughs> um, we want to go down to the eighth of an inch smaller. And I'm trying to think what that number is at the top of my head. And I know it and I can't think. I apologize. So, but an eighth of an inch smaller than the two and three quarter by four. And I just realized that I cut Oh, maybe not. I was going to say, I think I cut my Bermuda Bay incorrectly, but I think it's okay. All right. So we'll set that aside for now. Sorry about that. And I actually, my trimmer was slipping after I set it down. I'm going to set aside the white so that I don't put it down, but I am going to assemble everything else before I lose all the pieces because that would be something I would do. So we'll get our black. And I can't wait to see what happens. We have a brand new adhesive coming out next week. And I'm really excited. It's supposed to be stronger than our snail. And, uh, but it'll still be in a dispenser like snail. So I'm really excited to see what happens. Unfortunately, the snail doesn't hold up in our humidity in Ontario very well. So I've never been the biggest fan of it, but I love our tear tape. Having said that, where would I have my bracelet if I didn't have tear tape? So we will see what happens. I may not be able to give up tear tape right away. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take our embossed piece and I went over too far, but that's okay. Oh. So we are going to line that up. There we go. Like that. Then I am going to put my little white flap in the center. Oh, hi Amy, welcome. Oh, you're in Edmonton. Hopefully you've got good weather today. I know a friend of mine in Calgary had snow the other day. It was like, oh my gosh, you poor people. <laughs> they don't do snow very well. I prefer to hibernate. Okay, we'll line that up there in the center. This is why I love grid paper. You're able to line things up exact. Makes me very happy. Oh, hi Valerie, welcome. We'll get our tear tape lined up on this piece. 
and then we will get stamping. But I wanted to get these lined up before I lose track of them. So one thing I do like to do when I do with these centerfold cards is I like to make sure my black is lined up with my black. I hope that makes sense. I mean, it, you're eyeballing it, it will never be 100%, but I'd like to make sure that those are as lined up as possible. So then we're gonna deal with this center panel now. So I originally was going, well, I was originally gonna do a lot of things, <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to use the air guitar coming out of the corner because I haven't used it before and I thought that would be lots of fun. We'll get a block here going oh, and that one was tightly fitted into the corner. Pick that up. We'll get the memento ink going. That's better. And I think actually I'm going to go off on an angle with the guitar. So, and then I'm going to come up with some of the music notes up in the corner. And of course, the one thing I forgot to grab earlier would be the um, mic stamp cleaner. Go figure. So, we'll do these individually. And I'll just clean them later. If I can. <laughs> there we go. So I think first I am going... If I remember right, this is an eighth note. <laughs> it's been a very long time. What's really shocking is when did... At one point in time, I was going to be a music teacher. I'm glad I didn't. Architecture and stamping suits me much better. I do miss the music, though. It was lots of fun. I met a lot of great people that way. But I was never very good. <laughs> so that, I think, was kind of the deciding factor. Oh... <laughs> uh, Okay, and one more. Okay, so we'll put that down on the other as well. And then I'm gonna let that dry just for a second because I wanna do a bit of an ombre effect. But I also want to get the sentiment stamped. So I had this perfectly planned out to work on, um, to work these punches. I want to use the tailored tag and the classic label punch. I don't know about you guys, but I've been using punches a lot lately. I think because I've been doing more at home and less at crops with everything being canceled. Um, because I love my crops, obviously. Um, owning Crop Kingston with Amanda. Why wouldn't I love crops, right? Um, but I don't tend to pack punches for crops as I find them to be a little um, too heavy, to be honest. But I love how quick and easy they are. Give that a quick little... I'm going to try this. This might be too thin because I think it's actually just barely going to fit in the punch. Oh, no. It's going to work. I just have to... One thing I do love is the new take your... Well, new. New wish take your pick tools is if things aren't lined up in your punch, you can use them as well. Okay, that worked great. Talk about using all your paper. <laughs> um, sorry about the sneeze. Hopefully I don't. Okay. 
I think I'm okay now. And then I wanted to do happy birthday in Bermuda Bay. I don't think I need a piece quite that large. Oh, I had a piece in there and then it slid. Actually, that's perfect. You can tear away the parts I don't need and then I can um, get the tailored tag punch up in there. And normally I would stamp first, but in this particular case, because I'm trying to use up scrap, oh look at that, it'll even fit on the edge. What you guys can't see likely is the fact there is a score mark up above, so I was trying to avoid that. But it works perfectly. But these being photopolymer stamps, you can see through them anyhow, so it's not as vital to stamp first. I do need a bigger block though, and the other one is holding all my other stamped images or stamps. So we'll put it on this. I do like to use my grid paper. If you line it up on the grid paper, like so, so it looks like it has a straight line underneath it, especially with writing like this, where it's a little, um, it's cursive, so it doesn't all line, you don't have that perfectly straight line. But I wanted happy birthday, you rock. I thought that would be cute with the little air guitar. And then you can eyeball it on here and stamp and hope you have a perfectly straight image. Just like so. Okay, so now ink blending. It is allergy season around here, so I apologize if I end up sneezing. It's uh, been an interesting week. I'm going to start with the dark color first. So I picked three that all coordinated together and I'm going to show you a little trick I have. So I'm going to use the Bermuda Bay and I haven't, oh apparently I have but I don't know where it went, um, used a dauber on it before. So I'm going to pull one out anyhow. I'm not going to spend the time to search for it. But my simple little trick, and even without the blank one, actually it might be inside my stamp, is to use the extra stickers, even if they aren't in your language, on the back of the stamp set to label your sponge daubers. I'm more concerned about getting the color on there than I am about getting the name on there. But we have them all anyhow, so why not use them? And sometimes, yes, you will have different um, two shades of like blue or something that make it difficult. But for the most part, that little trick works really well. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to use Bermuda Bay, um, Coastal Cabana, and Pool Party to create kind of an ombre effect. Okay. And if you hit the ground running and right off the bat start doing circles, I find it works really well. But I find daubers are kind of one of those things that we all have in our arsenal and we tend to forget to use them. So there's the Bermuda Bay. Next up is going to be Coastal Cabana. I really didn't want to use a lot of the... Um, party. I apologize I hit my stand there. So we'll, once again grab one of the stickers. So this would be one of the ones where I was talking about where we've got two blues but you're going to be able to tell that one's lighter than the other and that will help decide and then I keep mine in the half mount wood stamp cases to try and organize them and when they're in those half size ones they fit in our um, our new storage organizers you can fit three so I keep the um, daubers in one and then I keep my uh, ink refills in another and it works quite well There. 
I may end up doing the whole card still. We'll see. I hadn't made this card before, so. Pool party, I did notice that I had a pool party one in here already. But I organize all my stuff by color family. So Stampin' Up! has color family, subtles, uh, regals, neutrals, you get the picture. Um, so I organize all my stuff that way, but it helps me find everything I need to. Probably should have re-inked Pool Party before I started, but that's okay. What fun would that be? And I think I'm going to go back in and I'm going to finish off filling out the card with the color. I had a vision. It's not what I wanted. So we'll fix it really quick. <laughs> oh, that was just my, my pool party dauber. Hi, Myrna. Welcome. So I'm going to go back in and we'll finish off with Coastal Cabana. So I'll still have the ombre effect, it just won't be the single line with some white around it. I didn't like how that was looking. Okay, and then we'll get the Bermuda Bay back. Bermuda Bay, believe it or not, is one of my favorite Stampin' Up! colors. That's why my logo is, um, it's actually Bermuda Bay, Melon Mambo, and Crushed Curry together. Although I'm loving the new um, Magenta Madness, I believe it is, in color, the new bright pink. It's so much fun. I think I can see a lot happening with it. It is like neonish, but it's it's kind of fun to have neon colors. Okay, this will settle in too while it dries, or once it dries, I should say. But what I am gonna do is rather than get ink on everything that's white, I'm gonna flip that over. It doesn't transfer after a few minutes unless it gets wet, but I just want to be cautious. So I'm going to line that up on my cart, like so. Then I'm going to take my I actually love it a lot more on that than I did previously, so it was a good pick. Um, I'm going to take my U Rock and I'm going to adhere it to my Taylor Tag Punch with the Happy Birthday. I'm hoping that's centered. Yep, looks like it. And then I'm going to take my Dimensionals. Actually, I want to double check something before I do. I think I'm going to punch a second Taylor Tag punch in black. So bear with me for a second. And actually, I'm going to do it three times and I'll show you why. Or twice, sorry. Man, it's been one of those days. <laughs> okay, and somewhere around here I have a trimmer. We'll just pop that on the trimmer really carefully. And slice that in half it doesn't have to be perfect but what I wanted to do was I want to create that separation I want to give it a black border and something I have come to realize very slowly is that nobody other than me notices the little black edge that will be there in fact you could go all fancy let's go fancy and you could angle these in on something resembling a 45 degree angle with your scissors to make it look like you always meant for it to be that particular way. 
So we'll do these first. And the biggest thing is to make sure, which I didn't do, you want the tips to line up of the two tailored tag punches. There we go. I think cutting those angles off is going to come back to bite me, but that's okay. Again, you want to line up the two tips and you want it to be slightly offset. Sort of like that. And then my thought was to fill it in. So we will still fill it in, but we'll go this way so that it has that angle to it. And then I can trim it. So you're just making a border out of the punches. It's a little bit more work, but it'll be worth it in the long run. I'm going to tentatively set it there. Tentatively set it there. You still want to maintain that edge all the way around. See how that goes. I'm sure there's an easier way to do what I just did, but anyhow. There. There. Oh, shoot. That one I cut a little bit too close, but that's okay. It'll be fine. We'll just put a jewel there. <laughs> so, but I think it does look a lot better with the black all over around it. So, I'm going to get some dimensionals. And you want to remember to only cover half in dimensionals. You don't want the whole thing. Like so. Just like that. And then let's get some bling on there. Oh. Hopefully, yeah, it looks like you guys are still with me. So awesome. Actually, I know they're copper, so it's a different style, but I kind of like the uh, added color. Anyhow. So let's get... Some of these stars out. Added bonus, it's going to cover up that corner quite nicely. But what suits the whole rock star theme better than little stars? Hi Judy, welcome. And we'll go with one more, just like that. Alright, so there you go. We got a happy birthday you rock card. So to create this stamp set, you need the music from the heart stamp set. I apologize, a bit messy there. But um, sponge daubers, I use Bermuda Bay uh, Coastal Cabana Pool Party and Memento Black Ink. Basic Black cardstock, Bermuda Bay cardstock, and Thick Whisper White cardstock. And then the Star Designer Elements. And the brand new textile embossing folder. So if you have any questions at all, let me know and I will do my best to come back and answer them. But thank you so much for all of you for joining me. And I hope that um, I'll see you next week when the new catalog will be live. So perfect. I will see you all then. Bye now.